Welcome back everyone, I'm Zell, and today we're getting a look at the Spyderco Polestar. Alright guys, I don't know what inspired Spyderco to name a knife Polestar, but uh, okay, whatever. So what do we get with this Polestar? We've got G10 scales, and this, I believe, is a peel ply. And what a peel ply is, is the scale on the top of the G10 has this texture on it. And whenever you get this in a, uh, a sheet of G10, it's got a coating over it, and you do all your cutting and chamfering, all that stuff. And then you peel the coating over it, that's why it's called peel ply, and you have this texture left over. And it's got a nice texture. It's uh, somewhat similar to your bird knife, and I've got one of those around here somewhere. Uh, you know, somewhat similar, a little grippier than the bird knife. And uh, anyhow, as we roll around the back, we've got very nice pillars. Nothing fancy, just straight cut, but they all look very nice. Large lanyard hole, and... A blade that is not quite down the center. And I have messed with this and fought with this a little bit. Part of the time it is right down the wickets, part of the time it's not. And, you know, that's kind of what we get whenever we go to the lower end of Spyderco. Uh, as far as dimensions, we've got 4.56 inches long closed, 0.447 thick. So they've made this one pretty skinny. That's kind of nice and a closed height of 1.57. Now, that's great. So let's, and let's get a look at this blade. Get that bird out of the way. What we get with for the blade is a very Spyderco-ish leaf shape. Nothing out of the ordinary here, except that it's made out of BD-1 steel. And uh, BD-1 steel, I kind of like it for the budget knife realm. It's a U.S. steel. It's it's reasonable. In my personal opinion, it's better than Spyderco's VG10, and it's definitely better than the 8CR13 MOV that they like to put in some of the knives. And our blade is 3.3 inches long with an edge length of 3.1. And something interesting, if we can get the light on it right, we actually have a bit of a sharpening toil on this one. That is an oddity for a Spyderco. Most of the time they terminate that edge right there at the end of your plunge grind. So that is rather nice. I like that. And we've got, you know, a standard Spyderco satin finish. Looks good as always. We have the laser etched spider there. And Spyderco... B CTS BD1 on this side, and China there, and Sal's Maker Mark right there. So they didn't make a billboard out of it, and what they did put on it, they shaped nicely to go with the knife. So, eh, pretty decent. I kind of, I appreciate that from Spyderco. And our blade stock thickness is 0.125, or just about 3.2 millimeters, so, kind of standard blade stock thickness, maybe a little bit thicker than your average EDC knife, but it's full flat ground, makes a great slicer. And let's get some comparison out of the way. We'll get our standards out here. We have our Rat Model 1. We have a Buck 110, and of course, it's a little smaller than both, but taller than both. And our Spyderco Delica. And it's definitely bigger than the Delica by quite a bit. In fact, it's like an ounce and almost an ounce and a half heavier than the Delica, but it carries a lot more blade. And from here, we'll go to our pause and read card, and I'll be right back with you. Let's get this thing in the Levi's and see what we come up with. Okay, now this is somewhat disappointing. Spyderco chose to use the hourglass pocket clip that's got the three uh, screws around 
the lanyard hole. And it's a nice big lanyard hole. You could stuff 550 through there plenty easy enough, but it doesn't need to be in the middle of the pocket clip. Because one, now we have to go searching for the right pocket clip if you get, want to buy an aftermarket pocket clip and it's not just uh, swap one off your other spider codes like say this one. So that's kind of a downer, but you know, it, it works fine. It's a spider grow pocket clip, leaves quite a bit of the knife sticking out. It's got that swept back design, so hopefully it's not going to bump into too many things. And it's got about your standard spider co flip up, which is not stellar, but it's okay. And the knife's big enough and heavy enough that you should feel it if it goes to come out of your pocket. So, you know, it's not great, but it's okay. Moving on along to our pivot and our pivot is a standard sleeve and torque screw pivot And it's running on phosphor bronze bushings and there see it's centered up perfect that time and that great and You know I played with that, but the knife is tight. It's not loose at all In fact right here on camera. We'll grab a t8. I think that's a t8. Yep We'll snug it just a little bit see if it falls in now see now it's falling in perfectly centered but it's really tight so that may be a bit of an issue i may need to lock tight this thing for nick well if i can find a good spot for it see if it falls back to center ah, it did fall back to center that time so maybe it was just a pivot issue trying to find that right sweet spot for it but anyhow, it's running on phosphor bronze bushings, and it's pretty good. It's going to drop free, but it's a little tight once you let that lock bar pressure come back down on it. And it is a liner lock. And in my opinion, this is where Spyderco kind of committed a cardinal sin. We have a Raven 2 here. Uh, if we get a close look, and we'll bring the zoom in, we can see that the liner in that Raven 2 is considerably thicker than it is in the Polestar. And thin liner locks are a problem. If you've ever been bit by a liner lock, it's probably been a thin one. Probably thinner than that, but I don't like to see thin liner locks in any knife, especially one that Spyderco is asking 60 bucks for. You know, this is up and above your budget model stuff. This is up in line with the Delicas and the other uh, middle higher end spider coast stuff so I, I expect a little bit better but you know that's what you get so anyhow ergonomically this thing is a spider co and that simply means you get a hold of it you got a little bit of texture and this texture here feels a little warm if you will and uh, it's it's nice to hold on to and just like any spider co or almost all spider co's you can get a hold of it any way you want to, and everything comes up real nice. Uh, I'm, I've always been a fan of Spyderco's ergonomics, and it doesn't disappoint here. And overall, they have built a pretty darn nice knife. Now, I'm a bit miffed at the pricing. At 60 bucks, uh, it feels to me like they're just trying to put separation between this knife and the Tenacious, wherever it went. Because in the big scheme of things, these two knives are very, very, very similar, but this is made with slightly cheaper materials. Although it's got a more beefy liner lock in it, but it does have 8CR13 MOV. But overall, your blades are pretty much the same size, the same shape. It's, uh, it's like they're trying to replace the Tenacious, which isn't a bad thing. Maybe they'll lower the price on the Tenacious, or maybe they'll let it float away. Either one wouldn't bother me at all. Tenacious has got that same pocket clip on it, by the way. But the problem I see with the Polestar is, although it's a very nice knife, Spyderco has this knife in their bird line, that would make it very, very hard for me to recommend a Polestar. This one comes in at under 50 bucks. I think it's somewhere around 40, 45. And like we saw earlier, we've got a more beefy liner lock. 
We've also got slightly thicker blade steel. Okay, so maybe we got a lot thicker blade steel, but still full flat ground. It's also made out of BD1, and it's a great slicer as well. You can look back at my review on this one if you want to. And it has one of the features I really like out of Spyderco. It's got that forward finger choil. Does mean you have a little less cutting edge, but it also means that the knife really, really fits in your hand well. And, you know, that's a... Well, it would make it hard for me to suggest you spend an extra 20 some dollars to get the Pole Star. You know, some people may want the Pole Star because of the thinner blade stock. They may want it because it doesn't have that forward finger choil, but uh, if you're a person that's here or there on those issues, the Raven 2, I think, is going to be a better knife. Uh, now, the other issue you're going to have is I'm not even sure what kind of warranty the Raven has on it. It's really hard to find on Spyderco's website how they warranty the uh, bird knives. And, of course, the Pole Star is going to have Spyderco's warranty. So, now, how do you make the decision? I don't know. But the Pole Star on its own is a nice knife. Is it a great knife? I don't think so. It's another iteration of Spyderco's kind of budget knife. You know, and that's kind of the thing we've had. This Tenacious has been around a long time. A lot of people love it. But this thing always ran about 40 bucks, and it had competition that was down under $30. So it was never a great buy. And right now, that's what we've got with the Polestar. It's selling for about 60 bucks, and whenever you can buy this knife from the same company for less money, it's hard for me to recommend it. Anyhow, guys, I'm going to belabor that forever, so I'm just going to shut up. You guys make your own decision. The Polestar, it is a good one. And I do like this peel ply that they've got for the G10. That feels really nice, and it also looks like they have upped the game as far as hardware goes. There's deep recesses, and everything looks nice and sharp on all the hardware. So, it may be a better knife than I'm thinking. It's just hard for me to recommend it with this guy over here. Anyhow, you guys have a wonderful day. I'm not going to make any poll jokes. I'll leave that for the others, and... Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.